Hey everybody and welcome to Bible Talk from the Green Room, the summer edition from the green front porch here. Hope everybody's had a good week. We are in uh, the journey of a lifetime, journeying through the Bible. This week in Lesson 16, we are on the book of Psalms here. The book of Psalms is known as the National Hymn Book of the Hebrew people here. Its chapters were set to music as worship there. And you see a range of expression in the book of Psalms here, from great joy and happiness all the way to deep sorrow and depression here, just depending on you know, what you're gonna, gonna read here. Hebrew poetry is what it is written in, and it is much different than the poetry we're accustomed to. It achieves different rhythms through three different types of or forms of writing here. Uh, and we won't get into those details there, but from the time of Ezra, the book of Psalms uh, in the original Hebrew was subdivided into five books or divisions, and that's what we're going to dive into there, just a high-level view of that. Uh, the Psalms of David were chapters 1 through 41, and basically what uh, David says here is that we don't need to walk in the counsel of the wicked. We don't need to be learning from those that are not following God. He also says, don't stand in the way of sinners meaning don't follow their lifestyle. And he says, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. What sit means is to teach or encourage. And he's saying, uh, don't encourage others to be sinful and definitely don't teach them to live a sinful life. Um, and what he's basically saying when you look at Psalms 1 and 2, says, he delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on it at all times. When we look at the second section here, we're going to be talking about chapters 42 to 72 those are psalms concerning the nation of israel there um, and it goes through the the different types again in the study guide here talking about the different forms of poetry there but it focuses on 46 10 and in verse 10 it talks about us getting our attention off of our problems and focusing on god's power and I talk a little bit about that this weekend in the sermon coming up. By the way, if you're local, I invite you to come on out to Calypso Baptist Church, uh, Sunday School 945, and we'll have the message at 11 o'clock there in the worship hour. Um, so we'll touch on this a little bit about focusing on God and relying on uh, His power and focusing on His grace and not focusing on ourselves and the world. Anyway, to the third section here, Psalms concerning the sanctuary, chapter 73 to 89. When we look at 73, 11 through 15, it talks about us focusing on temporary prosperity. But when we look at verses 17 to 19, it says how we can regain a proper perspective by looking at the ultimate destiny. When we look at section four, it's miscellaneous Psalms, uh, from chapters 90 uh, to 106. Says God's people have always been able to trust him. And he's always been and he will always be God. That's God with a capital G there. Um, when we get to the fifth section here, division of chapters there, Psalms for Worship, chapters 107 to 150. It says there are three conditions Set for happiness in Psalm 119. And if you know, here's a tidbit. Psalm 119 uh, is the longest chapter in the Bible. It's got 176 verses. So that's a trivia question for you right there. That A fact that you may refer to from time to time if you ever play any Bible trivia there. It says there's three conditions for happiness. It says obey the law of God. Seek God with all your heart and do no iniquity and walk in his ways. Psalm 119.11 means I have memorized your word to help keep me from sin. And that's an important thing. And we talk about that this weekend also when I go to Calypso Baptist of how rules in the Bible. Some people are like, I can never follow the rules. And that is true. That is why Jesus died for us on the cross. We can never be in this earthly state totally, holy, and do everything perfect. We rely on the grace of God and what Jesus did on the cross to cover for our sin. But one thing about it, when you can trust the author, you can trust what 
is being written in the book. And we know that we can trust God because He loves us. He cares about us. He wants to guide and direct us down the right path. And He never changes. So what was written in the Bible thousands of years ago that was inspired by God is true today. So those things that are written that we may look at as rules to follow, we know we're no longer living under the law. We're living under grace. But when we read and focus on those things in the Bible, it allows us to not focus on Satan. We stay focused on God and His will. And when we do that, we keep our focus on Him and we don't get off astray. And it helps keep us from falling off the tracks and veering off course and going and doing the things that Satan wants us to do. The rules in the Bible are there for our protection. They're not there because God wants to be mean to us. They're there to protect us from Satan. Jesus knows how tempting Satan can be. Satan tried to tempt him, and Jesus never gave in to that. And with him living through us in the form of the Holy Spirit and us connecting with him through God's Word, we can be empowered to do the same thing, to not face those temptations of Satan and to keep our focus on Christ. Well, that kind of ties up um, the looking at the book of Psalms here. There's a couple things. It's got a few definitions of words that are used throughout the Bible, but we see them in Psalms a lot. Amen means so be it. Blessed means happy, and hallelujah means praise the Lord. And here's another Bible trivia fact right here. You can uh, put back in your mind, and if you're ever playing and you're asked, the word revenue is found only one time in the Bible. And it says, Psalm 111 and verse 9. Psalms 111 verse 9. It says it's the only time reverend is found in the Bible. That's referring to the King James Version, which is what this reference uh, was on here. This may be different in another translation, and I'm not saying read one over the other, just referring to what the study notes say. But I thought that was two uh, interesting trivia notes there in today's lesson that maybe you can use down the road. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Be sure and like and share this with somebody else. I hope somebody else can watch this and be inspired to, to draw closer to God. Make a focus on mental health every day. Focus on mental health on yourself, with your family, with those you work with, and out in your community. I love you all. I hope you have a great weekend, and I really appreciate you tuning in. And we'll talk to you next time.